So here's two things. Do you guys understand a sales process? And two, do you know the importance of, do you guys understand the importance of a sales process? I feel oh, yeah. like I should say yes, but no. A, a sales process allows you to be consistent. And that's the ultimate thing you're looking within sales. Why? Because one day Marisol can wake up and she's feeling on top of the world. And another day you can wake up kind of on the wrong side of the bed and how you answer that phone, what you're talking to that person, it dictates your business. So if you can't be consistent and follow a process, now you're just going to act on emotion. I'll give you guys an example. There's a client of ours name is Ryan. When it comes to talking and building a relationship, they're number one. They just got a huge referral from a person that they worked with that came from email that turned into five day a week multiple buildings. How? Because he, he understood how to handle the phone and build that relationship, right? So it's okay that you guys don't have one, but today I want to focus on building at least an appointment setting. one. Every uh, outbound opportunity that we get, which is through email, I want to have a process to handle it. If not, you guys just go, Hey man, I got a positive reply. Somebody say they're, they're interested. Should I just call and say, Hey, uh, you're interested. Can I come on and give a quote? Nine out of 10 times, you're like, you're like every single person that they talk to. And now they're just going to treat you as another cleaning owner coming out and giving them a quote. And if you're every other cleaning owner who comes out and give them a quote, then you're going to pretty much be picked on the amount of money that you're charging. And now you're competing with price. We want to separate from that. The reason why we're sending out emails in the specific way that we are is so we can separate you guys from all the other people that are doing it. This is what we give to all of our private clients and we make sure that they look at it. If they already have a sales process, cool. If it's underperforming, take a look at it. And then I also made a video of going over the script, explaining it, uh, even play rolling a little bit of it just so you guys can see how it's done over the phone and stuff like that. 15 minutes appointment setting, just going over specific things like the basics, which I'm going to cover 15 minutes of Q and a regarding B2B sales questions, and then 15 minutes of play roll. So we'll allow, you know, a couple of you guys to play a role a little bit about how you guys going to handle the phone. And ultimately what you're going to learn here, you're going to be able to play a role and stuff like that. So I'm trying to keep it within a 45 minute, um, type of, uh, teaching. So let's cover the basics. ABC mindset, right? This is something that I've been taught since day one. We let our, all of our clients know, and it's always be closing, right? Your mindset as a business is that you have to understand if you don't close, if you don't have leads, if you don't have contracts, you don't have a business. It doesn't matter how good you are at cleaning. You can be the best cleaner in town, but if you do not know how to close the deal, how to get the contract, you're not going to be able to clean, which then your business can't grow. Leads are only worth it if you, if you know how to turn them into sales, your business needs cash to grow. If you can't close, you're going out of business. For instance, if you're really, really good, you're going to need a couple clients in the beginning, which you need to close the contract to start getting referrals from the work that you do. So overall learning how to close and always be closing is super important. A lead that replies back, Hey, I don't, uh, I don't need a quote now, but next month I can use one of, uh, one from you guys, right? That's a lead. Now, ultimately, is that the ideal lead? No, but a good business would say, no problem. I'll contact you guys back then. That's a good business, right? And then they go ahead and contact them once they establish a date of when to follow up. A great business is a business that sends two to three emails of more information about their company, their result, their client reviews. This is how you nurture a lead. It's super important that you understand that when a lead comes in and they're not ready your job as a business owner is to nurture them until they're ready and be top of mind. This is the extra effort that gets somebody the contract, the opportunity to go and give a quote. Um, you build trust with the lead. Now, when you follow up with a call to action email, which is very, very similar to what Tara had, the long paragraph of her business. And at the end, there's a call to action, which is giving the specific person a way to contact you or a way to take action, right? Once you do that, Right? You won't be a stranger. Trust me, people check their emails. The ultimate goal is always being top of mind. That's why having a system like this regarding emailing, is so important. Because if you sit there and send 130 emails out within a couple of days, you're, you're gonna, your fingers are going to pop off. It's not possible, right? So that's why we leverage softwares and stuff to do this. Um, and doing this makes the close much easier. So do you guys understand the the difference between the good and the great business don't be a good business take it up a notch and be a great business do the extra because once you have a lead that is saying they're somewhat interested now in this case now they need a quote but not now that is somebody that you can turn into business down the line and something that i tell eric all the time to tell everybody is hey guys 
you're not here for a week. Your business isn't supposed to grow in a week. You're not here for a week of business and then you're out, boom, gone, starting a new one. You're here for a long time, you're here to build a sustainable, consistent business, right? That can last years. And for you to do that, you need a full pipeline. And if you discard people like this, you're gonna have a super small pipeline. But people like this is the backbone of your business. People who say, I'm not ready now, but in the future. And then you put in your kind of twist to how you're going to nurture. That's what separates you from every other company. If you're not the best at sales, spend time to improve it. Because no one is going to sell your service and business better than you can. Period. Nobody. The sale starts when you first talk to the lead. How you answer, the questions you ask, and how you structure your call is very important. Never underlook the first call you have with somebody. You guys ever heard of like the first impression? is usually the most important one. It's, it's 100% true on the phone. If you get on the call, and I am, I joke you not, I, I usually sit down, I'll call cleaning businesses just, just to see how they answer the phone. This one time I called somebody to do with sleeping and he answered the phone. And I was like, hey, you know, I need cleaning service. He was half awake trying to like schedule something with me. And I'm like, oh, when are you free? He's like, I don't know, you know, uh, let me look at my calendar. He's just half awake. That you're not going to get business, but most people don't understand like, Hey, this first touch with the person that you're trying to talk to, especially if you're calling them from the email, you have to be professional. Like you, you have to show up. So we have an opportunity here. These are the the ultimate goals to get you guys to generate opportunities like this with email. So this person replied back saying, Hey, I'm reaching out because we are purchasing a building and would like a quote for your cleaning services. Uh, please let me know what information you require to give us an accurate estimate. We have not yet closed on the property. So if you need to do a proper walkthrough, I'll circle back around once we receive access. We're going to take turns and have you guys answer or call this specifically. I'll be Mark and then you guys be the cleaning owner that's going to be calling me. So Mark, myself, emailed you guys back this. And we'll start with Marcel and then we'll go to, um, let's see, we'll go in order. <clears throat> and then we'll go to Mario, Emily, and then Tara. All right, guys. Cool. So I'm the cleaning people, right? Yep. So you're the cleaning, but you're the owner, right? You, you're the owner. You're going to be calling me because you just got a reply back saying this, right? All right. Cool. Cool. Am I ring, reading ring. the script below or am I winging it? Mm -mm. Just give me what you have right now. Uh, cool, cool. Not much, man. Yeah. Okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> just get, it's fine. That's why we have these, these, these trainings to kind of slightly improve and nobody's perfect. And, and to be quite honest, a script is only there to help you stay consistent. It's never right or wrong. There's no such thing, right? It's just a matter of how you kind of approach it. And All right. Taste, I'm ringing you. Hello. Hey, Mark, this is Marisol with Sandy Spark. I did receive your email and I see you're interested in our cleaning services. How can I help you? Um, can you refresh my mind? What email specific? I, I get emails all the time. I'm not sure which email. Oh, sure. Not a problem. Um, it looks like you are purchasing that building and we're fixing to close on it. Um, uh, I needed a quote for that property. Gotcha. Okay. I think I remember. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I sent out a couple emails back to a couple cleaning businesses, but yeah, I remember sending out an email uh, to a business regarding, you know, us purchasing a new uh, building and, and wanting a quote. Wonderful. So I'd be more than happy to stop by once you get those keys just to do a proper walkthrough. When do you think that would happen? Um, I think we're finalizing it within the next, I would say seven to 10 days. Oh, wonderful. That works out perfect with our schedule. Let's go ahead and set that up. Let me know once you have your keys. Um, that way I can write it down on my calendar. Okay, cool, cool. Awesome. All right, you guys, would you like to call me back, uh, you know, seven to 10 days from now? We can. Yeah, definitely. I'll give you a call back. I'll also follow up with an email. That okay. way you can keep us in mind. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Awesome, Mark. Have a wonderful day. You too. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. I was um, on the spot, man. <laughs> yeah, no, 100. And you did really well for just being on the spot. I, I want to put you guys on the spot because this mm -hmm. is how you grow. It's like just being uncomfortable because if mm -hmm. you can do it on the spot, you can do it when you're just, you know, on the call with somebody and they're going to ask you questions and stuff like that, that I want you to be able to answer. So you did it really well of one. I asked you like what email and stuff, stuff like that, because people get emails all the time. Yeah. And if yeah. you don't know how to refer back to the email, then you're just going to be like somebody cold calling them. Okay. Right. They're going to be like, you don't even know why you're calling me. 
So at this point, I don't want to talk to you, but you're like, Hey, you know, I got the email. Here's what it's about. Sometimes I even read it out word for word and say, Hey, this is what you emailed me back. Right. Just to refresh their mind. Um, So if I am closing on the deal seven to 10 days from now, my ultimate goal is to not call back to schedule a time. My goal is to schedule a time on that call, right? Which is, Hey, you have a date, which is seven from 10 days. Now let's just give it 14 days. Would you be open on Tuesday, August 15th for us to come on by 1 PM? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right. Set the date. Now, instead of a follow-up email, you're getting confirmation emails of, Hey, can't wait to see you August 15th. Here's a confirmation. You set the date, you set the appointment. Okay. Right. And if anything changes, it's now no longer about selling the appointment because it's already set. Now it's just about rescheduling if it's necessary. Because if you were to call back, you have to refresh his mind again. Mm-hmm. You have to go over what you sent him again. So now you're back to square one. Okay. Nine out of 10 times, he'll probably forget what your business is all about or what the business name and all that type of stuff 10 to 10 days from now. Right. So it's super important that you actually convert it into an appointment. Okay. And be, be the person who leads it. So it's like, Hey, I have my calendar up right now. I'm free next week on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, are you free those days? Yes. Cool. Well, I'm free in the morning. Are you free in the morning? No. Okay. What about the afternoon? Yeah. I'm free in the afternoon. Cool. What about 2 PM on Thursday? And you're kind of leading them to finding a decision, right? Rather than having them, Hey, look at your calendar. Cause nine out of the 10 times when they look at their calendar, they're just going to pick a random time, not knowing if they have anything like you know, in those specific spots. And then one last thing is once you establish a time and a date, make sure you continuously remind them on the call, which is awesome. I have you down for August 2nd, 3 PM. Is that good? Cool. Awesome. All right, Mark, I appreciate it. Looking forward to talking to you in person, uh, August 2nd at 2 PM. All right. Awesome. Perfect. And you continuously kind of put into their mind And when they get off the phone call with you, you can even send them an invite for that time or something or an email August 2nd. 2 p.m. And they just keep seeing it. And then eventually they're like, what do I have August? I know I have something August 2nd, 2 p.m. And then the day before you follow up and let them know it's you or something like that, right? There's like a follow-up process beforehand. So other than that, you did really, really well. Like you answered it well, you introduced your business well, you went over what, you know, kind of what went over in the email and a little bit of those details really well. But closing that appointment was what I'm talking about. Just got to pick a time with them right there and then understand that your business is going to give them a walkthrough. Because if you let them off the hook, somebody else can call, right? And say, hey, I got an email from you and then lock down time with them. And now you lost an opportunity. Because oh. when you call back seven to 10 days, hey, you know, are you ready to book a time? Yeah, I just got a quote from uh, Jeff yesterday. Uh, I'm actually going with them. Oh, okay. Right. So booking down that time, being that first person to give them the walkthrough. What's the earliest time I can come in and give you a walkthrough? Next, let's do, we got Mario. Mario, you're next. All right, Ray Ray. Hey, what's going on? Who is this? Hi, Mark. I received your email on that you was moving to a new building. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, what what email specifically? I'm not sure what you're what email you're talking about. I sent out a lot of emails and hey, you lost me there, huh? <laughs> all, right, all good. All good. All good. <laughs> I don't know, man. You had to help me out on this one. <laughs> oh, no, no problem. So so let's start off with just simply, and this is something you guys will get access to within the script structure to tell you like how to open up the conversation, how to set the structure. Um, it's super important. that you, So some, some key pointers, you always lead the conversation, which means you always end the specific statement or what you're saying with a question that allows the prospect, the lead to answer, right? Okay. Because if you start answering and you just kind of leave it like that, And it becomes like, imagine you inviting somebody out uh, for dinner, but you're like, Hey, I'm good at six. Okay. And then they reply back. So am I. And then it just stays like that. Somebody has to take the lead, right? In this case scenario, when you open up the call, it should be like, Hey, it's Mario from blanks cleaning services. Um, Is this Mark? Just to get the confirmation that it's Mark. Right. Right. Once, once he's like, yep, it's Mark. Hey, how can I help you? Hey, Mark, um, I received an email back from you here a couple of days back, even use the time span. Like, hey, you know, I, I received an email a couple of days back. Uh, you said you were moving to a new building, uh, but you were in need of a cleaning quote. I thought I'll give you a call here and see if we can schedule down a time. You have a two to three minutes to chat right now. All right. Okay, what I did okay. there is I gave the, the Mark a specific reason why I'm calling. 
and the outcome that I want, which is to set an appointment. Marcel did it really well. She was just like, hey, you know, I want to see if we can you know, schedule down a walkthrough. Being clear and direct with what you're specifically calling for allows the person to know it's not a spam call, right? Okay. Or like a call, a random call. And then once you go from that, you then pretty much either ask them a couple questions or go straight into setting up the walkthrough. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. All right, let's redo it. Hello. Hey. Uh, hi, Mark. This is Demario. Um, calling. A reply to your email. Uh, you guys moving to a new building? Um, I, I, I'm. We are moving to a new building. But who is this? Uh, Demario from for Calvary Cleaning. Demario from Calvary Cleaning. How how can I help you? Um, I replied to the email um, that I received from you on on the second of this month that you guys are moving to a new building. Uh, okay. I sent out a, I sent out a lot of emails. I think I told a couple of people that we are moving. I'm just not quite sure, like, um, you know, specifically what email I sent out or. Okay. Well, it was on the second of uh, this month. You guys moving to a building, and we would like to come in and give you guys a new quote on cleaning. Are you guys? Uh, you have availability. This... <laughs> you do you have availability this week? Um, we are closing the deal for another seven to 10 days. So I'm not sure exactly when we're going to be able to actually have you guys come in, but, um, is it, is it okay if you guys give me a call back in seven to 10 days or. Um, I, was, no, I don't know how to reply to that. Uh, cool. So let's go over, uh, and, and you did really well, just kind of like picking it back up and stuff. Um, when somebody says something, when they ask you a question, always agree with them. Oh, okay. Right. And, okay. and it's like one of those things where like, Hey, um, we're not, you know, we're not, we're not needing a quote for seven to 10 days or we're not closing. We're not getting the keys from their seven to 10 days instead of, you know, kind of going blank or like, Hey, you know, when I, we're not getting keys for another seven to 10 days. Can you give me a call back then? Sure. I would love to give you a call back then. Now, you know, before we get off the phone call here now in seven to 10 days, when I give you a call back, is it to set a quote or can we set a quote appointment or a walkthrough appointment now and seven to 10 days, I show up, which, which one works best for you? Yeah, we can set down a time. Okay, cool. Great. Like always agree with them. Hey, I don't, I don't really have time right now. Can you give me a call back? Sure. You know, I, I understand that you don't have time. I know I'm calling randomly. So let's set a time. When can I call you back? Just so we're on the same page, right? Always agreeing with what they say, because when you agree, it kind of like let the person kind of puts down the guard. Right? Okay, agree. okay. And then kind of move forward. And now uh, something we, we need to have you do is you can read strictly what the email says. And then at the end, go, hey, does that ring a bell? Right? Right, From right. I got you. Um, and understanding that this person emailed you, right? They emailed right, you right. back. It's not like you're cold calling them. I feel like the way you're approaching the call is like you're, you feel like you're cold calling. You need to set the appointment. No, it's just about reassuring them that they reply back to you and then letting, know, letting them know your intention and then from there, seeing if they're open to getting a walkthrough. And if they are, let's set a date. Okay. So let's role play it one more time. And this is something if you want, like Eric can help you with like on, on uh, training. So if you book a call with him for 15 minutes, he'll help you with it. Uh, but let's, let's role play it one more time. All right. Hey, what's going on? Who is this? Well, hi, Mario. Uh, this is Demario. I was replying to your email uh, the other day on, on the second. But you guys moving to your new building? Uh we are moving to a new building. What email is it? Um, it's, you replied to my email um, from the second uh, about, about a free quote for your new building. Gotcha. Cool. And, and when I reply back, is it, so we, we are getting a new building and, and you said you're a cleaning company or? Yes, sir. We're full service janitorial company. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. I mean, we are looking for a quote. Yes. Okay. Um, would, would um, Thursday around 10 be okay? So we're actually not closing on the, the, the building for another seven to 10 days. So it's that's about two, three days out. So are we able to do something maybe, or can you call me back in about 10 days, 10, 10, 14 days or something? Of course. Just so perfect. we get the keys, yeah. Okay, okay, of course, it's perfect, uh, 10 days. I said, when I, when I tell them I'm calling back, do I need to schedule the time? A yep, always. <laughs> Always come up with a specific time and date. Always. That's an, because if not, he doesn't know when you don't know when you guys are now just in up in the air and sales is you don't want to, you don't want to be on the side of the unknown. 
you guys ever have, hey, I'll take a look at this. I'll, I'll take a look at this proposal and I'll get back to you. You guys ever had that before? If you gave out oh, enough yes. proposal, you've gotten it before. Yes, hey, yes. yeah, I'll take a look at this, you know, uh, you know, and I'll get back to you. Oh, yeah. They ain't getting back to you. <laughs> right, right, right. Right. So you have to establish kind of the date and time. So in this case, I'll be like, hey, cool. I'm glad you guys are, you know, getting the keys in seven to 10 days. Um, is it okay if we schedule a, a walkthrough, you know, time and date right now? Um, you know, maybe 14 days. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, in 14 days is August 15th. Are you free at 2 p.m. that time for me to come on by? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Let me lock it down. You should get a confirmation email or something like that. And, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and visit. And then from, from there to then you should send them a couple of emails about your business, et cetera. Okay, All right. Okay. So what I need you to do is I need you to get in touch with Eric and I need you on a play roll call with them because these are things where the leads, the opportunities like this, it doesn't right. matter if you get them, if you don't know how to handle them, right? right Especially right. over the phone. And if, if that's the case, then you're just going to be spending. And this is why nine out of 10 people who call, calls and talks to me and say, Hey, home advisor sucks. These lead sucks. And I'm competing. I'm like, well, level up, get better. Right. Right. Like get better on the call. And then you'll be, you'll be the one that winning. And then the other people complain that they're competing. Don't be the other person that's complaining that everybody is winning and you're losing, All right? Just level right. up your skills. So I need you to schedule a call with Eric ASAP. Okay. All right? All right. Other than that, I think you did pretty well, but I'm going to be quite honest. It's one of those things where if, if, if I'm talking to you and you're not clear and concise of why you're calling your intention, I'm probably going to get off the phone call because you're confused. And then in that case, I'm already confused of why you're calling. And then if you're confused and we're confused and then everybody confused, nothing's getting done, you know? I think the key Sorry. difference um, between Marisol and Mario was that um, uh, Marisol did a really good job of guiding the call because um, Min was more, I'm not Min, Mark was more so responding than asking and questioning and talking. Um, so that was a key difference in my opinion throughout the observation. Um, I remember um, when when Min was teaching me sales, you like Min told me you, you don't want the other person you're trying to sell to talk because um, it could lead to objection. It could lead to second thoughts. Uh, you want to guide it yourself and give them the proposal, give them the the, the value, give them the answer before they can even think of the question. Um, just so this conversation runs a lot smoother. One hundred percent. Cool, cool. Awesome. All right. So next we have Emily. So Emily, you can go ahead and unmute and then we'll have you play. Hey, who, who is this? Hi, is this Mark? It, it is Mark. How can I help you? Hi, this is Emily from Perfect Strategies Building Services. Um, we recently, I was checking up on my emails and I saw that you left me one saying um, you were purchasing a building and were like a quote for cleaning services. Um, I, 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 how long ago with this, if you don't mind me, cause I, I did send out a few emails. Um, not too long ago, like say give it a day ago, I received this and I'm just following up to see if, um, I noticed that you're still on the purchasing, haven't closed yet. And I want to see you want to do a walk, walk through when you got the building. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we're going to be closing on it in about seven to 10 days now. So we've, you know, confirmed like in you know, seven to 10 days, we're going to be able to do the paperwork, get the keys. But yeah, we are looking for a walkthrough. And I, and I think if it was yesterday, I did email, you know, a company back saying that we were looking for a quote. So it's probably most likely you guys, because I only sent one email back, but yeah, mm -hmm. I'm definitely looking for a quote when, you know, when we sign and get the keys. Yeah. This is something I'm um, looking for. Um, we could definitely schedule right now for a confirmation to do a walkthrough and through the bidding from two weeks from now, we can do some time the 16th in the afternoon. Um, yeah, I can do the 16th. Uh, I'm actually busy in the afternoon. Is there any way you can do maybe early in the morning? I don't know if you guys have any times for that. I can have someone out there with okay. you and they can, I can give them a heads up and let them know, put them on your schedule. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do that. Let's do the morning and yeah, early morning of August, August 16th, right? Is that what you said? Yes, I did. Okay. Awesome. Okay. All right. That works for me. Okay, thank you. See you again tomorrow. Cool. Thank you. Bye. Boom. Great. Until I got yeah. off the phone call, knowing that we're just going to see each other in the morning. Yeah. Okay. There has to be a time. 
right? Yeah. It has to be, hey, and it, it doesn't even have to be like an exact time. It could be like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll have somebody out there from nine to 11. Just be on the lookout. Right. Right. You ever got like sofa delivered? They never give you an accurate time, right? Because yeah. there's no traffic. And, hey, we'll be there from anywhere from one to six. So in this yeah. case scenario, it's like, hey, we can definitely give you a walkthrough. Let's schedule, uh, you know, a time for 14 days from now, which is August 16th. Um, I have morning, evening, and afternoon open. Which one's best for you? Uh, morning. Cool. What time in the morning? Can we lock down that time? Okay. For, for me to have I somebody out there. Like a more main struggle here with our business. So when I get calls from people, my main struggle is more setting up a time. Yeah. I know it's not always going to work because I'm not the one that usually goes and handles the bids or the walkthroughs. It's normally uh-huh. the other people and I try to accommodate with them. But yeah. it's more like I, I give you a time normally from 10 to 12. Hopefully they okay. meet it and everything. But it's just, I think that's one of the more things I struggle trying to talk with them about so, timing and when. And for then. sure. And, and it's something that a lot of business deals with. But here's a quote that I live by every single day. How you do one thing is how you do everything. If you can't give me an accurate time of when we can have an appointment, there's no way you're showing up on time when, when we're yeah. working together. Yeah. So that, that already kind of puts you in the boat of like, oh, wait, you don't even know what time you're going to be here. Cool, the morning, but like what time though? Okay. Right? If you're talking to like uh, people that are willing to pay you for your cleaning services, they know what they're talking about. They, they have a schedule. They're busy. Yeah. You know, so it's one of those things where for, for your guys right now that do in the quote, get them all on a calendar and put them in a group calendar or something like that and tell them, I need to know your schedule and I need you at this place at this time at this time when I book it. Yeah. If you guys don't have the integration, now it's like, let me call you back. Go call this guy. Hey, when are you free in the morning? Nine. Okay, cool. Call back. Hey, are you free at nine? No, you're free at what? Ten. Hey, are you free? At- now you're at this point, they probably hung up on you if you put them on that many holds, yeah. right? So yeah, the thing is, go ahead. Yeah, so normally when that happens, I normally have, I can give them a call back. I normally, but sometimes I'd never, they, they're interested, but sometimes I already lost them at that point. So it's yeah. like, I try to get ahead and let find out what time my people are ready so that we, when they're ready, I can schedule it for them. So. This, then this comes back to, instead of sales, it's more leadership. It's like, yeah. there has to be a time that you, yeah. you need to know their time. If mm-hmm. not, if they're, again, it goes back to working on emotion. If they feel like showing up, they'll show up. No, that's not right. Like we're working together. We're trying to build something. And it's like, if you show up only when you feel it, then we're probably not going to succeed. Yeah. Right. Cause I'm going to be honest. If as, as owning businesses and you guys aren't working nine to fives, maybe some of you guys are do, but if you own a business, technically you don't really have to clock in and uh, clock in and clock out. So the yeah. discipline of showing up every day is 10 times harder. So in this case scenario, in these cleaners that you have or the quote people, the salespeople, if they don't have a set calendar, man, they can just kind of brush that off and, and go and drink some coffee and call it a day. But you got to be like, hey, I need to know your schedule. Let's figure that out. Um, and, and because of that, I actually want to kind of figure out the calendar thing and, and help you out as much as possible on that. So I'll take the next few days and see if I can figure out integrations that you can put into the business that this person and this person can have the same calendar and you can see it to set the appointment. Yeah. Because it's super important that you have a time and a date. Yeah. All right. Other than that, you did really well. You, you led me exactly where it's necessary. Um, one thing I like is like you brought up the fact that I didn't close yet, but you would like to set a quote. So once I am closed, we can already be there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Awesome. Perfect. Uh, I think only one person is left, which is Tara. Tara, can you hear us? Hello. Yes, I can. Awesome. All right. Let's get this play role. I don't know if you were here in the beginning when I kind of broke down what's going on, but if you are, we can get yes. everything situated. You good? Yes. Okay. Awesome. All right. You're calling Mark. I'm Mark. Let's get to it. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hey, Mark. How are you today? This is Tara Wright from Cleaning Done Right. Um, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thanks for asking. The reason for my call today is I wanted to follow up on the email um, we reached out a few days ago um, concerning a cleaning. Oh, sorry, concerning a walkthrough, a quote for cleaning services, and I just wanted to go ahead and get that set up. I also see that you have not yet closed on the building, so mm-hmm. I just wanted to go ahead and get that appointment set up um, a little bit down the road and give you a chance to get everything else squared away and make sure that you have access to the building. Cause we definitely will need to do a walkthrough to give you an accurate price. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would be, I think I emailed you back a couple days back, uh, 
But yeah, I'll be open to, to getting a quote, yeah. Okay, great. So I see that you won't receive the keys until the 16th. How about we go ahead and set up for the 20th at 2 p.m. if you're free? 20th at 2 p.m. Um, let me check my calendar real quick. I am not open the 20th. I don't know if you guys have a time, maybe like the 22nd. I'm open all day, 22nd. The 22nd, I have 9 a.m. as my earliest available, if that works for you. Yep, that works. Yeah, 9 a.m. is perfect. I'm usually uh, here uh, around like, I would say 8 a.m., so I'll be here about an hour before. Okay, great. So we're all set for the 22nd at 9 a.m. I look forward to meeting you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. I thank you very much as well, and may you keep an eye out for an email. I'll send you over some information about our business in the, in the meantime. Oh, that's lovely. Awesome. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, have a good rest of your day. Awesome. Perfect. You did it. You know, I think that's like perfect. Then I love the ending part where you go, Hey, be on the lookout. And we're going to send over a little bit of information about our companies just to get it, you know, just for you to get to know us a little bit. Um, every single one of you guys should add in a, like an about me email after they book a call or not book a call after they book a walkthrough, which is they book a walkthrough and they, let's just say August 12th. And now it's like August 8th. So you have a couple days, like within those days, you should have like, Hey, this is who we are. This is who I am. Right. You know, Tara owner of blank, blank, blank. Here's my story. Here's a little bit more about me. You know, I want to hear, here's my, you know, uh, within my business, this is what we look forward to servicing our clients just to give them a little bit more detail about yourself. And then also about the business, give them a little bit about, you know, the business and the number one email that I need everybody to do, if you guys don't have this yet, go out and get it. I know everybody has some type of clients, client results, client reviews. If you can get your client to make you a video testimony or something like that, like that's even better. Start sending that out to your list. Start sending that out to the people that you have to follow up with. Start sending that out to the people that you have a walkthrough with. Hey, Mark, before I come on and give you a walkthrough, love for you to check out what uh, Susan, one of our amazing clients, had to say about our company and working with us. Send. They watch that video, game over. And when you go to the walkthrough, you can even go, hey, did you check out the emails that I sent you? Yeah, I did. I love them, blah, blah, blah. I saw the results. Now you're in. Now you're good. Right? You've already now established that trust. Okay, cool. I think that's it, right? Everybody has play role. And overall, guys, putting you guys on the spot, did not expect any of you guys to be you know, doing this. And it's one of those things where you guys all did really well. But it's always room for improvement. So it's one of those things where if you have trouble, et cetera, always feel free to reach out to us <laughs> for us to help you out. Okay, so a couple key pointers here is never give a quote over the phone. None of you guys did, so that's awesome. Um, how much would it cost to clean? I did not ask this question, but if I were to ask this question, do not give the quote over the phone. Um, this is how you would respond back though. Hey, Mark, great question. To be completely honest, I'm not too sure. And here's why. Uh, we would need to see the scope of work in person just so we don't give you one answer on the call and a different answer in person after the walkthrough due to other things that we weren't discussed or didn't discuss on the call. If you're open to it, I'm free at you know, this date, this time, this week to come in and do a proper walk walkthrough for you guys. One big thing, I, I acknowledge kind of the question and then I went into explaining to him why I can't give it over the phone. If I were just saying, like, hey, great question to be completely honest, I'm not sure and here's, I'm not, I'm not sure how much I would charge you. I would need to come in and get a, a scope of work. Like it's just going to be like, okay, I understand that. Nine out of 10 times, it'll, they'll let it slide, but it's always good to explain to them why you're answering the way you are just for them to understand. And here's why I can't give you a walkthrough, right? Because if I were to give you a quote now and I came in and do a proper walkthrough and I give you a different number, now we're comparing and I'm not quite too sure about it, okay? You have one goal in mind when you call, especially to these leads or when you follow up. Just sell the appointment. You're not here to sell your business. You're not here to sell your services. You're just here to sell the appointment. Ask them a question to make sure that you can, you know, do the service that they're asking for. If that's, you know, if you have requirement services that you don't do, it's good to ask. But other than that, you should be solely focused on keeping this call within three to five minutes and selling the appointment, not the service. The service is sold in person. The walkthrough, the proposal, all of those stuff is after. That's when you start selling in person. And the emails that you send after the appointment, that helps with the closing process tremendously. Right. Subconsciously, many owners don't do it, but it's one of those things where subconsciously, 
these owners or these people that are getting a walkthrough from you are checking your emails and, and they're seeing them. Okay. Uh, have anybody ever gave a quote over the phone? No, no. I have a question for that. So, of course. Um, not too long ago, this happened to me and mm -hmm. the lady was pretty persistent on wanting it over the phone or over the email, but I was kind of telling her the same thing you were telling me that, um, it, I, I wouldn't, I'm not too sure about the prices and from her just telling me and for me to actually see it. And she was like, I don't need no one to come and see it. I'm giving you all the plans, all the details. So she didn't want no walkthrough. And how would I respond back to that? No awesome. One? I mean, if she replied back to you saying, hey, I don't want nobody coming here. I already gave you everything necessary. Let's be honest. Do you really want to work with somebody like that? No. Yeah. So yeah. don't don't knock it. You know, move on. And that's yeah. the beautiful part about understanding and knowing how to generate your own opportunities and more business. You have an abundance, right? And when you have an abundance, you don't have to deal with those type of people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. And sometimes gonna, I've had uh, with my residential clients, like you said, they'll try to demand that price over the phone. I just remind them that um, for the price to be fair on both ends, I need to see the level of work that needs to be done. You just stand your ground firmly. And sometimes they will still allow you to set up that appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's happened to me, especially depends on how big the company is. Yeah. You can right away how they speak to you or how much they kind of want to really talk to you. So I've noticed that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, man, I actually want to just add something, you know, I was yep. kind of listening along here. So um, one thing you can do, so especially if it's, you know, um, you got to kind of pick your battles. I mean, if it's a small, um, if it's like a realtor that just has a couple move and move out cleans, it's probably not going to be worth it. But if yeah. you feel like it is worth it and you really want to see if you can do a walkthrough, um, it's always good to, first of all, um, in the sales process, understand exactly why they're looking for cleaning services and um, understanding their experience with cleaning service. So whether they did it themselves, maybe they had a good or negative past experience with cleaning service and why that was. And also what is the main pain point or pain points uh, that they have that they would solve um, in getting a cleaning service. And you can kind of use that to sell the, the walkthrough um, mm -hmm. If it really gets to a bad point where they're still giving you a lot of pushback, you know, you could even, you know, a, lot, a big part of sales is just understanding like why people say what they say and just digging and understanding the underlying reasons for that. So you could even ask some, you know, you know, that's totally under, like always acknowledge like, Hey, I totally understand, you know, uh, for me to not come by. Is there a particular reason for that? Uh, you know, and I always try to make it as simple as possible. Like, Hey, we'll, We'll come by for about 10 minutes um, and just make, make that whole process like super, super simple. So the only thing keeping them back is maybe something psychological or, you know, something like that. And you can kind of dig a little bit into that. Um, but don't, like I said, you want to kind of pick your battles. If it's a smaller account, it's probably not going to be worth it. But if it's a bigger yeah. one, you know, you yeah, can kind of just, yeah. you know, dig a little yeah, bit totally. further. It was a, a property management because we also do handyman services. Yeah. And for us to know a little bit more, we have to see it, see how bad the damage is, because it was a pretty big pro property management building, yeah. and they wanted us to handle all their maintenance and all their buildings. It was like six floors, and mm -hmm. I told her we needed for us to be there and see it in person to see what it is required for you guys, what you want from us to be helping you fix, and she wasn't really adamant on us going and checking it out. So... This is the exact reason why having a process is super important because in your process or having it actually I take that back, having an I ideal client avatar is super important. Yeah. So you never have to ask yourself, Hey, you know, what could I have done better? You, it's mm -hmm. just not your ideal person. It doesn't matter yeah. how big the job is, whatever. If they don't respect you nine out of 10 times, they probably won't even pay you at that point. You guys are in an industry where people can be like, nah, I'm done. Like, I don't, I don't want to work with you guys anymore. Cut. Yeah. Even though you guys have yeah, contracts. We had to do that a couple of times before. Yeah. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it sucks. But yeah. at, the, at the end of the day, you're dealing with people and not everybody is a good person. You know, yeah. I would love everybody to be like here, you know, thanks for coming by. Yeah. Come by all that type of stuff. But most of the time, it's not like that. You need, this is why leveling up your sales and, and what Tara said, standing your ground and understanding yeah. that your business 
is valuable. You have a, a service that you can provide it in, to anybody. And at the end of the day, no, no amount of money is worth getting disrespected or mistreated at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what we're learning now as a company. We're starting to learn how to say no to certain yeah. businesses, from jobs. Back mm-hmm. then, we normally just try to please every building people or everyone. But recently, we've noticed like we can't always take on everything. We just try to start yeah. saying no to certain jobs or certain people who try to demand more than what they're asking. Yeah, nine out of the ten reason, nine out of ten uh, people that get in contact with you and, and you want to please, you want to you know work with them. It's because you understand that you don't you don't have any other business coming your way. But let's just say you knew that you had something that generates you five to 10 opportunities every single month of people interested. You're going to be like, no, I have more people coming my way. Yeah. You know, and that's why like marketing and sales are the two most important things in your business. It's not really the cleaning. The cleaning comes like after all of this, Yeah. which every single one of you guys are really good at. Right. But that doesn't build the business. Right. So it's like understanding the marketing and sales side. That's super important. That's why obviously you guys invest into this program. Plus why we're going over sales right now is to be disciplined with it. Uh, Let's talk about objections. This is something everybody's going to get. You guys, if you guys want to get really good at sales, it getting objection a goal, right? Objections are like your ideal thing because that's interest. Now, objection doesn't mean it has to be bad. It can be a lot of different things. An objection could be, Hey, let me call you back. I have to talk to uh, you know my partner about this proposal. Another objection would be, hey, um, if we were to do this, can we cancel any time? T- two different objection, right? The one objection to me, it's kind of like, I call it the cover-up objection. It's not really true. But sometimes you have to understand the conversation, right? And, and it's like, if somebody's trying to brush you off, you can feel it. Right. But then the other objection is more of a closing objection, which means it's like a couple of questions before you ask you to lock down the deal, which is like, hey, are you able are we able to cancel if anything happens? Yeah, you can. You know, here's the rules, whatever. Are you ready to go? OK, those are like closing objections. OK, but I'm going to talk and, and stick to these appointment setting uh, type of objections. So if somebody said, yes, I'm interested with an email, for example, this email up here and you get on the phone call with them and then somehow, some way. You get off the call without a set appointment or they say, no, thank you. After the call, there's only two reasons why it happened. Number one, the lead isn't qualified, which I highly suggest you guys ask a few questions before setting a time as well, just to make sure they're qualified, right? You don't want to show up and all of a sudden this person is like not the person you want to work with and you wasted, you know, 15, 20 minutes driving there, 15, 20 minutes sending somebody there, right? So asking them a few questions to qualify them or you're not qualified for them which means after they spoke to you, they don't think you're a good fit. They don't think you can handle it. They don't, they're, for instance, in uh, Mario's case, I'm confused, you're confused, we're both confused, pretty much like we're not gonna do business together. Those are only two reasons why these replies don't go well. Other than that, if you sharpen up your skills, every reply that comes on in, you should have a bidding quoting opportunity. And then if not, close the deal, okay? All right. But uh, if they have quick ahead. question before you go forward, sorry. Yep. No um, problem. Okay. So one on the objections, when you're saying to ask a few questions to find out if they're qualified, yep. what kind of questions and where do we squeeze these in on that sales appointment setting call? Yeah. So on the appointment call, so I can role play it with you real quick if you would like. And um, when you say like what type of question, that now on, goes under like who's your ideal client, and okay. then reverse engineer that avatar and then what would you ask that avatar and what answer would you want from them to create the avatar okay right so for example you only work with uh 2000 plus square foot locations just just throwing a number out there a question you ask is hey you know before we move forward uh just a quick question what is your square footage if you don't mind me asking okay okay write, write that down cool cool um some people even ask, hey, are you currently working with the cleaning company or have past experience just to get an idea, right? Um, but this is how I would kind of squeeze it in there, okay? So let's just say I'm talking to Mark and then, you know, I, Mark understands exactly why I'm calling, which is super important. Instead of going, cool, now that I know you need to walk through, let's set a time. You can be, hey, you know, uh, Mark, so before we go into setting a time for us to come on out, uh, is it okay if I ask you a few questions to make sure that you're a good fit for what we do and what we provide? 
Okay. Most of the time they're gonna be like, yeah, go ahead. And you don't wanna ask like 10 different questions, just ask a few. Right, okay. And, and start dialing down on super important questions, maybe two to three max. And then at the end, you either go, hey, Mark, you know, we can definitely come on and give you a walkthrough. Seems like you're fit within, you know, our service um, and what we provide. Um, are you okay? We come out X and Y, Z time, et cetera. If they're not a good fit, let them know. Hey, you know, after answering those questions, I'm going to be completely honest. I don't want to waste your time. Uh, just so where, what you're looking for, the scope of work you've explained. I just don't think we're a good fit. Um, in this case, if you guys have people you guys can refer them to, do it. If not, just let them know and then move on. Okay. Right. Cool. So that's how I would squeeze in. Does that answer your question, Tara? Okay. Yes, it does. Thank you. Cool. No problem. Awesome. Anybody else? That's a common thing, by the way. I, I suggest everybody ask those questions or some type of questions before sending the appointment. In this case, I just wanted to briefly go through this with you guys. But obviously, I highly suggest you have a few questions to ask. Okay. Um, but here's the thing back on track. But if they have other objections, nine out of 10 times, it will come after you give them the price and proposal, right? How to get less objections, bring up the objections before they can. That's how you get less objections. Bring it up before they ever do. Right? So let's go over, there's two objections we're going to go over. Price objection and time objection, which are two very, very common objection. Not even just in the cleaning industry, just B2B sales, right? Business owners love to stall. And business owners love to give price objections. We're well, not just business owner, anybody. Those two things, time and price. Okay. <clears throat> so let's start with this. Hey, name or hey, Mark, just uh, so we don't waste each other's time. Is, uh, is there a cleaning budget that you guys have set aside? Great question to ask before you set a, an appointment. And they go, no budget. You go, no problem. How about I come out, give you a proper walkthrough, and we can discuss the budget, et cetera, after. Okay. If they do have a budget, figure it out, figure out why this is their budget. And if it's qualified, schedule a walkthrough. If it's not, let them go or let them know and let them go. Not everyone is, not everyone is going to be a good fit. The point of learning how to generate your own leads is to understand that the more business, that more business is coming your way. So there's two things. You always want to bring it up. Bringing up money allows you to kind of answer it before you even go on to the next steps. Because the last thing you want to do is go, 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 go money. They go too expensive. Like, God, I just freaking spent two hours here. And now you're saying it's too expensive. It has to be something that you need to figure out before, which is asking them about their budget. If they do have a budget, you have to figure it out. Hey, you don't have to tell me the exact, just give me a, a you know, an estimate of exactly how much you're investing in or how much you're putting out for cleaning right now, just so I have an idea. If it's too little, we'll let you know. If it's too much, we'll give you a better deal. Um, and then usually the whole point of this is not to get this objection at the end, guys, is to get it and, and bring it up before it ever happens. Okay. Uh, time objection. Hey, Mark, uh, so that we're on the same page, is this a priority for you right now? Finding a good, reliable cleaning company, or is it, you know, this something you're looking for in the, the next couple of months? Another question to ask on the, on the appointment as well. Right. And if you don't ask you this on the appointment, great questions to ask on a walkthrough. Like, what's the urgency? What's the priority? Finding it, it, if it's now, perfect, cool. Schedule the quote, close the deal. So this, so let's just say Mark goes, yeah, I'm looking for a cleaning service now. I need to make a decision within the first two weeks. It's ASAP. So when you go out and you give a quote and they don't go with you, maybe it's because of the sales process, something you did in the sales. It's not that they weren't ready when they were looking for you right now. They say they're, they are. But if it's in a couple of months, you have to handle that a whole different way. Okay. Um, another way you can ask is, Hey, Mark, just out of curiosity, are you guys looking uh, to move forward with a cleaning company ASAP or in a few months? Just so I have a time span. Okay. Uh, bring this up early. will allow you to know when they're looking to make a decision. If so, you should structure your sales cycle to closing them. Now, if in a few months, structure your sales cycle to a longer sales process and focus on nurturing them and being on top of mind until they are ready. Okay. So the reason why I say closing now and then nurturing them until they're ready is if they are nine out of 10 times, if they a hot lead guys is like someone who gets back to you and say, Hey, I need a quote. I need a cleaning service out here. I need to walk through ASAP. That's where you can close now. But then the nurturing part where like the, it's a longer sales cycle, somebody that's kind of the warmer side of, Hey, I'm not ready now. And they usually tell you I'm not ready now, but I will be in 30 days. 
the nurturing email, the nurturing process kicks in, right? Which makes the, uh, the sales cycle longer. But at the end of the day, again, I'm gonna bring this up. You're not here for a week, you're not here for 30 days. You're here to build a long, sustainable, consistent business in the long run, okay? All right, so that is all for today regarding appointment setting. Now for the next two things we're gonna do is Q&A, B2B sales questions, and then uh, appointment play role, which we already did up there. But if you guys wanna play role again, if these are a couple questions and stuff like that, I have here as well, just in case. Or if there's scenarios that you guys have faced that you guys want to bring to, to this call and have me help you guide you know you through it, I'll be more than happy to do that as well. But Q&A, anybody can unmute, ask any questions about this appointment setting or any type of sales thing that they've experienced that they want input on. You can go ahead and uh, unmute and we can go ahead and answer it. Um, I, I had a, a lead um, pretty warm. Um, it was a nice size building, like 14,000 square feet. And uh, they, were, they were very unsatisfied with their cleaning company. Mm -hmm. uh, I came and gave them a quote. And, um, and when I send my uh, proposal, yeah. I always send um, three of my current clients as references. Awesome. And she, she called two of them to, uh, mm -hmm. to ask about, you know, our services. And she also asked them about my price. So out of, out of ignorance, I, uh, I overpriced it very bad. So I just found, recently found out that she still had the same cleaning company and they're yeah. trash. And, uh, and I've been following up every month. And like I said, my, my sales skills is garbage. And uh, how, how would you approach that, knowing that she's still with that same garbage company? One... <laughs> understand that this is this is just to explain to you guys why sales is so important mario just said this garbage company right the cleaning services so what they're doing is garbage but somehow they have the contract right so who business is grow? <laughs> sales but doesn't mean that you can't recover and you can't get you know her back on your side. You got to start giving her a reason to join and, and sign a contract. There has to be a reason. You can't just follow up. Like, how are you following up? Let me ask you that. Uh, I might say something like, uh, hey, how you doing, dog? Just um, checking back in. Uh, seeing where, uh, uh, you know, are you still unsatisfied with your cleaning services? Uh, something simple, try not to hold long. Uh, like I said, I don't have a sales process. Yeah. Gotcha. Cool. Cool. So you're just trying to follow up and trying to be top of mind and, and just kind of ask her a couple of questions to see if, you know, when she's ready to leave that company, but, and, and it's not working. And the reason why it's not working, it's because you're not giving her a good enough reason to leave her current company. And also on top of that, you know, when, when you did have the chance, you kind of messed it up. So it kind of leaves somewhat of a sour taste in, in her mouth or whoever's the decision maker's mouth. And they're not going to come on and say that. Right. Um, but if you really want this contract and you really want to, you know, provide the service for this person, think about creating, right? because at this point, it's not like a brand new lead that you're about to give a quote to. This person's already heard from your company. This person's already got a proposal from, they already know the price you're going to charge. So they have the I've, leverage. Um, I have a quick question. So were you able to determine why they like that company? Is it the pricing? Is it like in, in their mind, is it the, I understand your your opinion, but um, what what is their uh, main reason for? Do they have a main reason for sticking with that company, or multiple reasons? Um, well, I don't know why they're sticking with them, but during the walkthrough, uh, they talk bad about their cleaning. They they consistently don't do the job, you know. So when you come up with a um, what Min is saying, so when you come up with a unique and uh, basically a message and an offer that resonates with them. You want to make it, um, when you've already started the sales process, you want to make it specific um, to whatever their pain point is. So, uh, you know, men, you know, in the case of, you know, if they want to see a certain result, we might have a, uh, if we want to move forward, we might make uh, what's called like a result-based guarantee to move everything forward. So in the case of being reliable, you can actually create an offer or a guarantee around that. Um, man, I don't know if that kind of makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally would approach it if you really, if you know that that person's garbage and that company is like really bad, you can email her saying like, hey, you know, I have tried following up a few times. I genuinely want to work with you guys and help you guys 
uh, by providing better services than your current company is. And I want to give you a guarantee, you know, work with us. We'll figure out a proposal, new quotes, whatever. And if we don't perform better than your current company, we'll give you a full refund. Now you're putting the test on if you're really better than this company. Yeah, that's what's this called. Case, uh, that's called risk reversal. You know, yeah, so when like, people, when especially when they want to sign on with a cleaning company, part of the reason they don't want to change their contract is because of the process. But if you make it quick, easy, and also reverse the risk, they mm -hmm. it, you have to make it hard for them to say no. That's basically yeah. it. Because leaving their current company to go work with you, and then your company doesn't turn out the way they want it, now they're left with zero companies. So they have to re-look for a new company. So if you make the process as simple as, hey, you know, let your current company know you're going to be on pause for about a month and let us come in. If we can't perform better than them, we'll give you the money that you paid us back and you can go back to them. But at least give what we have a try. Gotcha. Right. Gotcha. That's how I would it. Yeah. So uh, with his scenario, like he acknowledged that he had overpriced them for a little like somewhat how do you recover from that because i feel like that may happen to me so how would you recover from that like do you just say like okay well let me work with your budget or how does so that when you um min do you mind if i just add one thing real quick of course yeah, yeah yeah so you never ever want to discount your services because that tells them that the prices are negotiable when working with you and it changes the dynamic of, instead of you partnering up, it's more of like, hey, I'm just gonna, like this person's working for me type of thing. Okay. So what you can do instead is a couple of things. So you could, you could actually add on maybe an extra service or two. You could also acknowledge that maybe a certain time period has passed and you said, hey, like we're looking to maybe partner with one more, if it's a medical facility, whatever it is. Um, and we wanna make sure that we're adapting to your needs just to sell the phone call. Um, but like Min said, you don't ever want to give an exact price over the, um, over the email or whatever, cause they mm -hmm. can just ignore that. And you don't, you can't ask the right questions, you know, to actually see if it is a price objection or if they're just using that as a cover up from another, for another objection. So, the, yeah. Okay. So let, in your case, Marshall, let, let's just say you sent the proposal, you know, you overprice and, how do you recover from that? Right. Is that the scenario you're trying to draw as like, yeah, I'm trying to like imagine that that does happen. So okay. I'm thinking like, I usually with my residentials, I'll say like, well, everyone's service is tailored to your needs. Um, mm -hmm. and we are an investment. It's kind of like my pitch and they always see that. And they're like, yeah, you are, you know, like, I'm like, I know, <laughs> Yeah. but you know, um, I'm assuming this may happen with commercial so yep. just like i know it's not as i don't know i i feel like with residential is very personal because you're in their home mm -hmm. versus with their business so i know how to recover from that in a residential and usually i have no issues getting the money i want mm -hmm. um because our work does you know show the investment yeah and that usually helps out. But with commercial, like, I'm not too sure how I would be able to recover from that to excuse like, okay, yes, I know I'm more expensive, mm -hmm. but what we're going to do for you as an investment for your business type thing. Awesome. All right. I understand exactly where you're going with this. It's just like, once you send it, how can you, and if, if they feel like it's too expensive, how can you know and not be left like ghosted, right? You know yeah. what I mean? And then how would you handle it? You know, cool. So here's the thing, guys. How many of you guys just send like a proposal? Like you go give the walkthrough, you go home, you create it, you send it to them, and then you just wait for them to respond. Oh. Nobody? Okay, good. Awesome. I'm glad. Um, and also Tara asked Alex, that's called what risk? The thing about um, giving them oh. the option to do it for X amount of days. If they don't like it, they can you know get a refund or whatever. Oh, it's called uh, risk reversal. I'm actually going to see if- Reversal. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, there's different types of guarantees. Um, let's see if I can find something from that book. Uh, and let me back. Yeah. So it. back to answering Mar Marshall's question. So one thing that what you guys need to do is maybe when it comes to this scenario, you have to handle it before, right? So you have to plot it. Like, let's just say if they were to ask, what would you do before? So if they were to tell you it's too much, you can handle it. 
number one, it's being, I, I always suggest like being there when you give the proposal or being on the call or maybe even invite them onto Zoom and give the proposal over Zoom and say, hey, I'm going to send you the proposal and I would love for us to be on a Zoom meeting just to discuss the proposal and anything that needs to be added, taken out, et cetera, that we would like to discuss, let's go ahead and go on Zoom and finalize it, right? And send the proposal via on the call. And then that allows you to be there with them and answer the objection if it's there, right? Number two, you should honestly have a, they should have a budget in mind, right? And if they don't have a budget because they've never had a company before, help them establish a budget, explain to them why they need a budget. Okay. Like, and pre-frame the importance of your service. And it's like, Hey, you know, I'm going to be honest. If you're not, if you're not prioritizing cleaning and you, and this is just by asking questions, you can tell if somebody prioritized it or not. It's like, hey, how important is having a cleaning company consistently clean for your building? How important that is to you? It's super important. You know, we want to make sure our customers are getting, you know, the best when they visit. It's clean. It's like, okay, cool. So they, they do value it a lot. Okay, awesome. Well, just out of curiosity, you know, yourself and, you know, obviously this, this location, are you guys more of the quality over quantity or, or quantity over quality? And if they start saying quality, now you have them in a state where now they're, they're always going to pick quality. So when you give the price, you go, hey, I'm on the same page. I'm glad you say uh, quality because that's what our company provides. We're not the cheapest. We're not the most expensive, but we charge regarding to the quality of work we specifically provide. Okay. Okay. And I always love the line. We're not the cheapest, but we're not the most expensive. Right. And we want to work within your budget if it's necessary. Now, if it's too cheap, let them know, hey, is there a reason why you're only willing to pay X just so I have an idea? Because sometimes they might have a really good reason, right? Maybe they're just like, well, well, I don't really need the whole thing clean. I just need half of it clean. Okay, cool. Well, you know, that's, that changed the whole perspective. You should have told me that. Okay. Does that answer your question? Mom? Yeah, it does. I hate when they say that too, though. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't yeah. want this room clean or this area. Uh. Yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> what's and the like, point eh. of doing portions? Yeah. No, 100%. I mean, honestly, it's one you can, uh, it's in, in the marketing aspect, it's like upsells. Like if they don't want those cleaning, uh, cleaning space, like or space clean, there might be a reason. Hey, why, why don't you want to clean? Oh, well, I just think it's, you know, too expensive. I were to add this, whatever, then you can clean it. You just got to give them a, a good you know offer, you know, but if they're like, we just don't need it. Right. We, we honestly don't need this room clean. I totally understand. But at the end, if you're charging, let's just say example, a hundred bucks or something like that, you can say, Hey, you know, you can throw in that room and instead of charging you 50, we'll do 25 and we'll do the whole house. Let's get this whole thing on, you know, mm -hmm. clean. How's that sound? They might, that little 25 can be like more, you know what I mean? It's, it, it helps you upsell them. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Hope cool. that answered your question. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Just to kind of go along with the same question that Marisol was asking, um, yep. when, if you have overpriced, is it yeah. a good idea to follow up and maybe offer a discount, which actually puts you closer to their ranges, but make it seem as if you're offering 10, 15, 2% discount, whatever it is? Um, so in this case scenario, you want to find out, so one, you have to find out if it's really the price. Okay. And usually it is, but you want to find out over the phone. You don't want to email back and forth. Never sell via email, via text, guys. It's just, it doesn't go anywhere. Because yeah, a lot of this is, um, yeah, a lot of things that you'll discover is people say one thing, but they mean another a lot of yeah. the time. So like, that's why it's important to do whatever you can to get them on the phone or even better, see them in person. Because not yeah. just reading like what they're saying, but also like the body language. If they say it's price, you can you can usually tell when someone hesitates or they're holding back something, and that's your opportunity to kind of find out the real problem if it's not just price. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you guys a scenario. If somebody replied back after asking them, "Hey, just a quick question. Uh, you know, we haven't heard back from you in two or three weeks. You know, are you still looking for cleaning service? Yep, we already picked somebody. Oh, I totally understand. Just so we can better our company and best provide our service to, to future business or opportunities. Do you mind if I ask you that what was the big decision maker within you know the process that you guys had to picking the cleaning company? If they replied back, you guys were too expensive. You ask, hey, I totally understand. Um, now this, this new company that you're specifically going with, I'm, I'm guessing, you know, they're obviously uh, cheaper, but none of this should be handled over email. 
it should be like, hey, uh, thanks for getting back to us and you know letting us know that you're too expensive. Nine out of ten times, you have their phone number. You should call them up. Call them up and be like, hey, you know, how's everything going? I saw your email here. You said you were too expensive. I'd love to hear exactly what you mean by that. Too expensive for what we're providing, or we're just out of your budget. Which one? Right. Just so I have a clear understanding. You always want feedback. It has to be something. And doing it over the phone will always be better. And nine out of 10 times, if you do over text, somebody can leave you on red. You leave it over email, somebody can leave you on open. You do it over the phone, if they hung up on you, honestly, it's not somebody you want to work with. Right? So that's kind of the, the approach I would go with it. Um, it's to handle everything over the phone. Talk to multiple cleaning owners and there's two types of people. There's, if, hey, everybody thinks we're too expensive. I can't work with anybody. And there's another guy who goes, hey, everybody loves me. And I know I charge more, but they still go with me. And I'm like, this guy knows how to position it. Because honestly, price for what you provide, if there's no reasoning of why you're charging that much, it's just now, it, to them, it's just like price, service, put together, it's too expensive. But if it's like price, a, re, a really good reason why you're charging that much, and then, you know, there's their specific need. They, they can justify, right? You I have feel to like we've grown to do that. Do uh, like justify our price. So yep. now like they just love us. So it's yeah. pretty nice for that. But now I want to translate that to commercial. And I'm like, am I a commercial person? Like, you know, personality wise to click with them. You jump in there. Mm -hmm. And you, you'll find out after doing it. <laughs> I know I'm ready. Right. So that's the biggest well, I thing. Got once, one. Right. So it's one of those things where as opportunities come on in, you know, just be yourself. That's the biggest thing. Guys. No script, no structure. It's It's better than just being yourself. Now in case scenario, if yourself isn't the best at sales and you're aware of that, become better, you know, improve your sales, you know? So that's how you're always going to level up. And something I let a lot of people know is these objections you guys are getting, not knowing how to handle them. It's, it's not a business problem. It's a personal problem. It's you guys not reaching out and looking to seek, you know, more skills, more information on how to better yourself to handle these things. So because of that, you're stuck within your business. I don't think price um, so much. It's more so your sales, your customer management, your people skills. 